Today is Wednesday, May 29th, and this is the Amherst Planning Board, uh, 7 p.m., and we're going to start the meeting. Uh, the first thing on the agenda, we have approval of minutes, and I do believe we have one set of minutes from May 15th. Um, they were in our packet. Are there any comments, or does someone want to make a motion to approve? Okay, this far, anyone second, second that? Great. Uh, any discussion, any issues, changes? Okay, everyone looks good. Okay, so we'll vote. Uh, ready to approve the minutes? Raise your hand if you approve. If you, uh, that's unanimous, so we're good. Okay, so the next thing on the agenda, we have um, appearance of uh, attorney Bob Ritchie, member of the Bylaw Review Committee. And he's going to uh, speak to us about the proposed changes to the zoning bylaw to bring it into conformance with the Amherst Home Rule Charter. I don't Welcome. Do you have to yeah. yeah. Hold it down. Yeah. Hold yeah. It. No, you don't have to hold it there. Hmm? I don't think you have to hold it. Uh, I don't want to repeat anything you've already heard or know about it. Uh, it would almost be preferable if you just asked any questions, but the gist of it is that the charter has charged the committee that uh, I chair to uh, review the bylaws, the old bylaws, and uh, look at them with a critical eye to see how they adjust well to the form of our new form of governance. So there were two committees. I chaired the last committee, the first committee, which ceased to exist when the new committee came in. And now we're a committee of five, three members of our council on the committee. So we have Alyssa Brewer, Evan Ross, and uh, Pat uh, uh, DeAngelis. Uh, so we've been meeting. Our charge includes the general bylaws and the zoning bylaws. But obviously our attention has been significantly drawn to the general bylaws, which is where most of our hard work is taking place. But the charge uh, is also uh, includes the zoning bylaws. And the first committee did what it thought was an adequate job to form them uh, in such a way that the uh, council could enact them as uh, the uh, zoning laws of, of, the, of the town under its new form of governance. There were relatively few changes. So the first uh, committee made that recommendation to the council elect and then to the council. Uh, the council chose not to act quickly on the theory that it would rather take its time since urgency was not of that importance and they could take their time reviewing it. And so instead of uh, quickly going into uh, the legislative process to enact them, uh, they deferred the matter until the second committee to review the bylaws had a chance to work. Uh, the first committee uh, uh, produced a document that the planning board uh, had reviewed and reported uh, to, the, to the council. It had a life span of 90 days that came and went, uh, precipitating the necessity of doing it once again. So this is a redo of what the board did before. With virtually no changes, it's exactly the same. So the, the timeline dictated by the statutes and the charter is that the planning board will hold a public hearing on the proposed zoning change, which is something you're all familiar with. This is all hat to you. Uh, it's a 14-day notice uh, to successive weeks prior to a public hearing of the planning board that is mandated by general law, chapter 48, section 5. You know that. This is the same, same old, same old that you've done all the time. So we're going to have a planning board hearing, I understand, scheduled for the 5th of June. And that would be the occasion where you do it once again, have the hearing, public comment, and then make the, a report with recommendations to the council. Uh, once the council gets your report with recommendations, it can proceed to the next phase of things, which is uh, to uh, have the proposed changes read at two successive meetings of the council. Uh, followed by uh, the uh, the actual enactment of the of the new bylaw. So what you have is basically a repeal of the old and an adoption of the new. 
Uh, you have seen summaries of the changes. They're relatively few. Uh, unlike the general bylaws, the zoning bylaws has evolved into a, a well-integrated, reasonably well-planned document. The general bylaws, by comparison, bear no resemblance to the general. So we really needed to do a lot of work on that. We make some recommendations at the end of the report that my committee made that how we might in the future want to make the zoning bylaw that we're about to enact better and to have it be work sort of integrally with the general bylaws. So we have a coordinated code for the town, both general and zoning. Uh, we have some recommendations about how you may wish to label and number and title the components of the zoning bylaw, but that's, that's uh, for future work. Uh, the, my committee will probably wrap up its business and that would be just uh, grist for the mill for both the planning board and the council going forward. And uh, so I think that probably sums it up unless you have any questions of specific or general I can, I can answer for you. Um, are there any, uh, what, we, what you might think of as substantive changes that you're proposing, other than simply uh, substituting a town council for a select board and, and things yeah. of that sort? Yeah, that first level uh, wash is to delete references to select board and, uh, and insert the town manager and the council, and in some instances the board of licensing commission. So the personality swap was the first wash. The next, the next uh, uh, collection of uh, uh, changes would be relating to uh, numbering sequences that had been identified as a problem, which we saw, sought an opportunity to fix a few things uh, that are sort of organizational rather than substantive. Uh, I don't think there's any substantive change. Uh, it's all low order stuff. And they're all summarized in the report that we made to the uh, to the council uh, in, in three or four pages, it summarizes what those changes are. Uh, I, can re I can reduce them to a single page if you'd like me to just run through them for you. Have we, have we received that summary? In, uh, in thing. No, no, that's not the thing. Oh, that's really hard. Okay. Yeah. This time around, I gave you the uh, full um, bylaw with the changes marked in red. I sent it to you right. via email. I'm happy to make copies of the paper copy if anybody would like that for next week. Um, you did receive the report that Mr. Ritchie is talking about um, for last December. I didn't think of giving you that report tonight, but I can certainly put it in your packets for next uh, for next Wednesday. Would you like that? I would, yes. Okay. It's not really exciting reading, but uh, there are so few changes that I think you can do it rather quickly. Maybe the best way to acquaint yourself with what was done is to take a look at the report of the bylaw committee to the council, because they're, they're uh, enumerated and, and summarized there. The, uh, the changes uh, in, in uh, Article 3 uh, merely uh, changed the, the method of uh, uh, appointments to conform to the charter. Uh, in Article 7, there were some uh, uh, suggested changes uh, that emanated from this board to fix the enumeration of sections. Uh, there was uh, a change of non-conforming temporary signs <coughs> uh, allocated to the town manager uh, in Article 10 dealt with the appointment of alternate members and members of the, of the board. Um, and one, one section aggregated provisions relating to marijuana uh, into a, a single coordinated clump of provisions rather than being sprinkled around. And that's pretty much it. Yeah. Uh, as I say, there are no substantive changes. Uh, it was thought best to establish a baseline document for the changes that uh, this body has thought about doing. But before the changes that you are working on really uh, go forward, it would be good to have a new baseline document that conforms to the charter that you could then modify in the ways that you're currently contemplating doing with future changes to the bylaw. 
So, Chris, first, I just want to ask you, so to, you're going to include the three-page summary in our packet? Yeah, okay. And it, this, it's the same as what we got in December. Yeah. 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 So. yeah. Chris? I can also include the minutes of the December 12th meeting so you'll know who was there and how everybody voted. Would that help? That would be useful to me, yes. And if any questions occur to you uh, during the twilight hours when you can't read, uh, go to sleep, uh, let Chris know and she can talk to me and I'll try to provide answers to you before your meeting on the 5th. Uh, I have one other uh, question. Um, what, uh, what authority are we operating under at the moment? Uh, since the by current bylaw refers to things that no longer exist, are we still operating under the current bylaw? It's a very good question, and the authors of our charter took careful attention to that. And there was a provision, mm -hmm. both in state law and reflected in the charter, that the bylaws of the town of Amherst that we've known and loved for many years continue in full force and effect with the obvious changes to be understood to have been made. So if there were a necessity to enforce a bylaw in which the select board was supposed to do something, we would now assign that depending on whether it was a legislative or an executive function to either the council or the town manager. So those changes uh, would automatically kick in. Uh, in fact, the town of Framingham, a number of years ago, has undergone through what we've done, and they still have the old bylaws. Uh, they, they're surviving, it's a survival <laughs> strategy there, but not well, we're doing it right. We're gonna create that new baseline document early in the game but uh, all is not lost. It's a very good question because we can live with the old bylaw, but it's clunky. We always have to ask, how do we change it uh, to, to read consistent with, with the law? And we, we'll eliminate that question once, we, once the council enacts the new one. So uh, if, in, in, for all practical purposes, this body should continue to operate under the existing, well, under the uh, 2017 revision of the bylaw until such time as the council passes a new bylaw. Yeah, the charter and I think Article 10 addresses that. The provisions of the uh, existing code of general bylaws and so on about continuing full force and effect until a new bylaw is revised, adopted, repealed, you know, until that process goes on. There is a switchover point, and that point is when the council acts. Up until that point, the old bylaw continues in full force and effect, and from that point, the, the new document uh, will kick in. Thank you. Okay. Chris. One more thing. I just wanted to make sure everybody knows that there was a bylaw that was published and it's online. It is dated November of 2018, and it uh, includes all of the bylaw amendments that were adopted through the spring of 2018. Um, we didn't publish uh, a lot of these because we knew we were going to be changing so, so quickly. But if anyone does want a hard copy of this bylaw, I'm happy to give it to you. And I also wanted to ask who besides Mr. Burt Whistle would like a copy of the redlined um, bylaw that you're going to be considering next week? Or is the electronic version sufficient? It's okay. 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 All right. Any other questions for Mr. Ritchie? Thank you for coming. It's a pleasure. And we'll see you next on the 5th. What's that? Will you be here on the 5th? Oh, yeah, I'll be here. Uh, as I say, if any questions arise uh, in the meantime. And we stay in touch with the, the town attorney on all of this. Although I am an attorney, I am not in this case. I have no attorney-client relation with you. Uh, I'm just one of the worker bees along with you to that have volunteered to help the town out through this process. Uh, so we, we, we do touch bases with uh, uh, Joel Bard and Lauren Goldberg as circumstances uh, require. Make sure we're on the right. My opinion doesn't matter, it's their, theirs does. <laughs> so we want to be right. Well, thank you for your hard work. Chris? I just wanted to make one more suggestion. I think it would be really helpful next week um, we may have an audience because we have advertised this as a public hearing and there may be some people who are just um, catching on to what's going on. So if Mr. Ritchie would uh, give the synopsis that he gave mm -hmm. um, in the beginning of this meeting, I think that would be helpful 
for yeah. everybody to understand what's what's being done here. I think that's an excellent idea. Okay, I'll be here. Thank you. Thanks. So the next item, uh, public hearing, site plan review, SPR. Uh, 2019-04 Amherst Community Television, <coughs> Amherst Media Corner of Gray Street and Main Street. Uh, this is a public hearing continued from March 20th, 2019, and there's a request to continue again uh, to push this meeting to in July. So, Chris, do you have anything to intro? Yeah. I recommend that you continue this meeting to um, July 17th, which is a Wednesday, at uh, 7.05. Okay, and I will mention that in your packet, we got a letter from the Zengineer uh, requesting that they push this meeting back to July. Um, and Chris has told me that we need to approve this. So first off, does anyone have any issues or questions about this? Okay, we're all good. Um, anyone want to make a motion to continue this? Yeah, I move we continue the uh, hearing until uh, July, what was the 17th? 17th. And Pari seconds, thank you. Um, is there anything else we need to do with this? Okay, that rolls along, great. Oh, we have to vote. Great. That's right. I'll raise your hand if you approve. Thank you. And it's unanimous. <laughs> Thanks. Uh, next public hearing, Planning Board Rules and Regulations, PBR-1-19, Planning Board Rules and Regulations, Planning Board. And this is continued also from March 20th, 2019. Uh, to review and update and amend the planning board rules and regulations to bring them into conformance with the Amherst Home Rule Charter as adopted <coughs> March 27th, 2018. So we have some stuff in our packet for this. So, Chris, we got a couple of emails from Mr. Bard on his comments on this, and then, is that the same? Yeah, and we... Um, how about, could you give, because I, can you give a summary of the fees one? That was the new one. The... The one dated uh, May 24th. So Joel Bard is our um, attorney, our town attorney. He's an, um, an attorney with Copelman and Page. And um, I asked him to review the changes that were proposed for the um, planning board rules and regulations. And he had um, two comments. One had to do with um, what we call, well, let's see, what do we call it? We call it third party review. And um, we are, the planning board is able to um, require funds to be deposited from an applicant to pay for um, a review of some aspect of an application that they're not comfortable with. In other words, if it's um, an engineering issue having to do with stormwater management or a traffic issue, um, you don't quite believe what's in the traffic report or something like that, you can have... Um, the applicant put money in escrow to pay for a review by an engineer who is competent to review the material. Um, and so what um, we had had in our, in our rules and regs said that when, um, when there's a, a dispute about the amount of money that's going to be uh, put in escrow or the, or the individual firm that's going to be hired to do the work, um, that the dispute would be um, adjudicated by I believe it was the select board in the past. Is that correct? I gotta remind myself here. Yes. Yes, it was the select board. Yeah. And um, so I had
thought it should be the town manager because the town manager is acting as a, an executive. Um, but Joel Bard uh, thought that it should be the town council because they, are, uh, they can act as a quasi-judicial body and the town manager really can't act as a quasi-judicial body. So in his opinion, um, that duty of adjudicating the appeal of um, who is going to do the third party review and what the fee is would go to the town council. So um, I'd like you to uh, think about whether you would like to approve that. And then do you want me to go into the other suggestion that he made? Sure. Or? Okay. So the other suggestion has to do with voting. And um, what he said was that uh, we had a discussion last time about site plan review decisions and whether they should be um, a majority or a two-thirds vote. And um, so in Mr. Bard's opinion, it could be either a majority or a two-thirds vote. Um, but many cities and towns do um, just go with the majority vote. And he suggested some simple language um, as opposed to the kind of convoluted language that we had previously. Um, and the simple language is the concurring vote of at least four members of the board shall be required for any decision on a site plan application. Um, so that would be for your consideration. However, at a previous meeting, Mr. Stutzman had suggested that you merely refer to the zoning bylaw for um, for the method in which some uh, a site plan review would be approved. And I'm trying to find the page where that is applicable here. I think it's towards the end. It's page 104. Why can't I find it? There it is. It's um, on page 14. So Mr. Stutzman had suggested that you say uh, that the, for site plan review that the vote of the planning board on a site plan review application shall be as stated in the zoning bylaw, Article 11, Section 11.25. And that uses the old language and eventually you will probably propose to town council that that language be changed. But for right now it remains as it is. It remains that it's either two-thirds or a um, minimum of five. So you need to choose whether you're going to go with Mr. Um, Mr. Bard's suggested language in, that you have in your email, or whether you're going to merely refer to the zoning bylaw and put this uh, decision off to the future. Could you read how it says in the zoning bylaw? And I think, Michael, is that 106 you said? Yes, it's, it's page 106, uh, 11250. Um. So in the zoning bylaw, it says, for a planning board decision on a site plan review, the concurring vote of at least two-thirds, but not fewer than five, of the members of the board participating in voting shall be required for any decision on a site plan application, abstaining members being considered not to be voting not to be voting. So that's what it says. This is based on a membership of nine. Um, that's what the assumption is here, but um, we haven't changed anything of substance in the bylaw, so, um, so that language remains as it is in the zoning bylaw. Does anyone have any, well, maybe we should just break it into the Two. How about we deal with the first one, the the, the consulting third-party funds, and we'll talk about that, and then we'll move to the the second one. So, does anyone have any questions or issues with the first or the change um, dated May 24th? That email from Mr. Bard about um, about the third-party funds and changing it from town manager to town council. You know, no, I real. think that's eminently sensible. Excellent, okay. Mm -hmm. So now we'll go back to this other, the voting. Um, what are people's thoughts on either going with what Mr. Bard is suggesting, the simple language, or just do the refer to the zoning 
um, bylaws and hope that it gets changed at some point. Any thoughts? Well, uh, yeah. my thought would be to uh, use uh, Mr. Stutzman's uh, language from last time, referring to the existing zoning bylaw, um, and personally hope that it's not changed. Uh, <laughs> But uh, it seems to me that it's an issue that we can uh, uh, postpone um, f to, to such a time when we can have a uh, perhaps a more substantive dis discussion about uh, the value of uh, a two-thirds majority uh, vote for such an important issue as a site plan review. Pari? Yeah, I prefer to stay with Mr. Sussman's proposal right now because I think it's just safer. So I would rather stay with Mr. Stutzman's suggestion for the moment. Um, Jack? Uh, I, I uh, like what Joel Bard actually did. It. It's, just, it's just simple. Uh, you got to have four whether you have you know, you gotta have your quorum, but it's just gonna be four. Uh, anyway, slice it sort of thing, and uh, I was wondering what you thought, uh, Chris? Um, I think that the four is consistent with the spirit of the <clears throat> bylaw and the research that we did in the spring, um, that most cities and towns do use a majority, and um, since the bo uh, planning board has shrunk from nine members to seven members, it makes sense to me to shrink the number of voting um, people who need to vote in favor of something from five to four, because that's essentially a majority of, of seven. So to me, four makes sense. Um. Maria? Um, the question I have is, so does that four mean if like tonight there's five people, four have to vote yes? And if there's four people, that's not quorum. We wouldn't have a meeting. No, that's still quorum. It is. So it would have to be 100% mm -hmm. for the quorum. So for us to go with Mr. Bards, it means either, you know, uh, four out of five. I don't, can't do the math. But four fifths or 100% if we're down to four or five planning board members, which to me sounds a little extreme. So I, I think that, I mean, I'd prefer the word majority but if it's too much to sort of rewrite and have another version sticking with the two thirds until we can get it sort of fully fleshed out, um, I prefer not to have the four from uh, Mr. Bards, but then two thirds also feels too high. That's my opinion. Chris. So I agree that this discussion may well be postponed to a time when you're actually looking at the zoning bylaw and um, looking at changing it. So I think it's reasonable to leave Mr. Stutzman's suggestion in place for now. So looking, the, to make it clear, so with the way that it would be with the zoning bylaw, how would it work, you know, if there were, say, six or five people? The zoning bylaw requires five people to vote in favor of something. So if it was like tonight, all five would have to. Um, That's correct. Yeah. Yes. So the keeping it the way it is is more extreme. It goes against um, the usual practice in Massachusetts. Uh, like some of the research we had done, it, we realized places like Northampton and Cambridge and Sturbridge and lots of other towns, they not only do just the majority instead of the two thirds, but they also do it of just members present. So if like tonight, it would just be three people. Um, so we're already being very conservative here in Amherst by doing, um, if, he, if it was just a majority, of, because it's of the total council, so it has to be a minimum of four. And we're going to very ultra conservative, leaving it the way it is. Um, you know, I would be for going with the professional recommendation of Mr. Bard because it sets a tone from us that um, 
you know, it's a nice balance. It's not as the you know is um, looser as what generally happens in other towns in Massachusetts. Yet it's not treating it like a site plan review. I mean, a special permit, which um, the problem is the SPR is is basically by right and pushing it up into the 70 percentiles and sometimes 100 percent of members attending, I think, is extreme. So I'm, you know, Chris. So there's one um, sort of practical issue, which is if you change the rules and regs tonight to be mm -hmm. four to go with Mr. Bard's suggestion, then you can't really use that because the zoning bylaw hasn't changed right. yet. So that's why Mr. Stutzman recommended his version, which is you put language in your the document that you can control and then refer to the other document that needs to be changed. And then you would have an opportunity to make a recommendation to town council about changing the zoning bylaw. So I think that's a clean way to do it. Hold on a sec, Jack. So, but when could we anticipate that happening? You know, that the town council will get to um, be receptive to hearing our proposed changes to the zoning bylaw. I don't know what the town council's priorities are and whether this would rise to the higher level of a priority to be voted on sooner rather than later, I don't really know. I mean, they have a list of things that they're eager to tackle. And um, so I, I, I couldn't guarantee that this would be handled anytime soon, unless you really pushed it, which you could, of course, push it. You could make a recommendation to change the zoning bylaw for that specific item, along with the other smaller things that you're currently talking about. So that would be really up to you. But my sense is the town council, well, and yes, and that if you did that, they would have to follow um, a schedule to get to voting on your um, petition, your so proposal. By, if we went with Mr. Bard's suggestion, that would send a message to the town council that this is important to us and we want it to be looked at because we're gonna be looking at the zoning bylaw anyways for lots of different things. But you're saying if if we don't push it, it could be more than a year. It could be a long, long time, longer than how long some people will even be on this board. Yes? So I think it's challenging to um, the town council right now to think about changing zoning bylaws because they don't really understand how it all works and they need to you know, have more familiarity with the bylaw before they launch into changing it. So I'm not sure that if you proposed something like that, they would immediately understand what it was you were proposing and, you know, jump on board to approve it. They might just say, let's leave it the way it is. So I think there's a lot, there's a lot going on. So the, the easiest route would be take Mr. Stutzman's language and go with that and wait until a future date to change the bylaw. Wait or wait and try to engage the council to take this on as a higher priority? You could engage the council to take it on as a higher priority, yes. Any other thoughts from board members? Yes, Michael. Um, yes, I, I, I want to speak a little bit about this notion of uh, site plan review being uh, a, a, a by right um, operation. Um, it's, it's very clear from the zoning bylaw on page 106, uh, 11, 2501, that denial of the site plan based on a determination, A, insufficient, uh, insufficient information, or B, that the project does not meet the requirements of section 11.2, is one of the options that the, that the planning board has in dealing with a site plan review. It can be denied. And we keep talking about this being a by right uh, operation, and that's not really true. I'm not a lawyer, and, but I'm just trying to read this bylaw and understand exactly what it says. And it seems to me that it's absolute, absolutely incontrovertible that it is this body's right to deny a site plan review. Um, so, uh, 
that puts it for me into the category of a significant decision at the same level of a special project, a special permit. And I am fully convinced that those two operations should be parallel, that they should have the same kind of voting requirements, the same kind of procedures, uh, and they should be paralleled in the, uh, the various documents that we refer to. Uh, the, um, the rules and regulations of the um, Zoning Board of Appeals specify exactly how the voting should take place. I think the rules and regulations of this body should specify exactly how the regulations should take place. I think the notion of referring uh, to the uh, zoning, uh, zoning bylaw as a stopgap is appropriate, and I think we should uh, approve uh, Mr. Setzman's uh, um, proposal from last time. Uh, but I really think that we need to carefully uh, evaluate uh, at this point what uh, that denial of site plan based on determination actually means and no longer take for granted the uh, opinions of uh, Mr. Tucker who, whose ideas have been referred to us on several occasions about this issue in the last several years uh, as gospel. They are not. Um, Mr. Bard says that uh, a, four, uh, a, a uh, two thirds majority is reasonable, is legal. Uh, he didn't say reasonable, he didn't use those words, but he said it is permissible under the statute. Uh, the fact that more municipalities choose a majority vote than a two thirds than a two thirds vote is a fact, I think. Uh, but it's not necessarily the determining fact. And I think we need to be very careful about this. And I know, well, I think that I'm maybe in a major in a minority on, on this position, but uh, I would like to have a fuller discussion of this at such a time when we're not bound by the need to uh, fix the, the, the issue uh, relative to uh, the new town council's need to have uh, uh, bylaws in place that uh, are referred to the town council properly, which is basically what, this, what we're trying to do with this document. So um, in short, um, I think we should approve the notion that the zoning that, that our bylaw, our rules and regulations should, on this issue, refer to the zoning bylaw, and take up the issue of what the zoning bylaw should be at a later time. Um, I just want to clear up a few things. When we look at our zoning bylaw, you have to remember where it came from. It came from decades and decades of slight changes and new thinking and new changes evolving and. Part of ours hasn't been changed or fixed in a long time. And site plan review is basically a by right. Um, you know, Mr. the history we got from Ms. Bestrup, some of it is his, his interpretation, and Mr. Bard gave us his. But if you look at recent history in the state of Massachusetts, in the last two years, both Democrats in the House have proposed bills, and the Republican governor, Mr. Uh, Baker, has proposed two bills very similar that is trying to make it statewide that site plan review would be a simple majority because it hinders um, restrictions that are not very often not legal. And what happens is this is when planning boards get sued. And there are legal cases that we have. Um, one of them is Osberg versus Stur uh, um, Town of Sturbridge, where it, it was found too restrictive. And it actually, what came out of that was that it should be a simple majority of only members present, planning board members present at the time. So actually, even if we go with what Mr. Bard is saying, it's still much more conservative than what is been, has evolved through lawsuits and, and, and our own let state legislature is trying to fix, um, which I anticipate in the next few years they will get it fixed and then, you know, it, it will 
be fixed here. But anyway, so the key part to remember here is even Mr. Bartz is conservative in the fact that it says you have to use the whole count of seven as the majority, meaning four, and not what the industry standard for the state is pushing and evolving to, which would be a simple majority of members present, which could be as low as three if we only had four members at a quorum. So anyways, times are changing, things are changing. We do have old bylaws and, and I hope either now or later they will be looked at and, and you know, it'll be more about just the numbers of voting, but we're looking at it holistically on trying to control and encourage the development we want in Amherst and yet still control, you know, the basics what you can. But by right is a tricky situation. Anyways, does, oh, I, I'd like I, I'm gonna go with Jack for, <clears throat> oh, I was gonna say, uh, there's often uh, uh, members that will abstain um, or recuse themselves, uh -huh. and that further makes it, uh, uh, I think, more in line with this mm -hmm. two-thirds by, by virtual two-thirds uh, when we're missing one of our members because, uh, you know, they have, like they have <laughs> one of those basic uh, things where they have to sit out. But uh, so uh, I, I, I think the four is a, is a, a reasonable number, and it, and it uh, you remove if there's someone with a conflict of interest, and uh, I just think it you end up with a virtual two thirds very easily mm -hmm. uh, due to the dynamics of uh, of the board. I think, uh, Parry, I'm gonna go. Um, just a technicality question. Is it even possible that we have this discussion when we're a full house instead of just the five of us? Could we, could we have this discussion when all of us, like in a meeting where well, almost all of us? Sorry, it's this? only one person because the other person won't be here. And well, I mean, at some yeah. point. So just you want David going, here when we talk about this? I mean, I, I don't I don't have any particular request for anyone in particular. I just think that there are meetings in which there is more of us present. There's only one other member as of in a month. Yeah. So Mr. Stutzman isn't here today, but he could be here um, on June 5th. So so you should could we continue postpone this, this to discussion to June 5th, and then you would have Mr. Um, Levenstein and Mr. Stutzman here, so all seven of you would be here. On what date? June 5th. Next okay, week. and would fit that in with that. Um, could I ask for um, Mr. Bard to actually, he never addresses the part about um, his thinking on whether it should be based on the full board number of seven or the industry practice of members in, of, who are there above quorum, quorum or above, yeah. It took me about a month to get this answer from him and I, he's on vacation this week, so um, I don't think I could get the answer by June 5th. I'd appreciate if you could still put it on his list then because if we put pressure on the council and they're willing to look at zoning on the sooner rather than the later, we'll have the answer because I think that type of question is gonna come up. If you had a quorum present mm -hmm. and you had a majority of the quorum, would that be sufficient? Right. The industry based on like Osberg versus Sturbridge, you know, and all the other towns. So the research we did, Chris, I found, you know, dozens of towns, they just have it on members present. They have it say SPR, it's simple majority of members present. And I just want to hear what his thoughts are, you know, as if, if this is going to become a full, you know, think out and redo, you know, for the council, whatever, it's going to, we should have that information. Yeah, Michael. Um, Osberg didn't decide this case. It said, Osberg says, without deciding whether a municipality without statutory authority may impose voting requirements. It said without deciding. They did not decide yeah. that issue. No, no, no. You're missing how the law works. So what happened is that happened, and then in the history of the next five years fallout, 
you know, lawyers use a case to, because other lawsuits were happening. So what happened is by 2005, a massive slew of Massachusetts towns and cities have adopted the, this actual one line that says simple majority of members present. And if you Google that, if you actually take that quote and Google it, dozens of towns will come up that have just implemented what came out of this lawsuit. The lawsuit itself didn't create the wording of what legislatures use for their site plan review. That's right, so we don't yeah. refer to the lawsuit as precedent. What's precedent, what's precedential, is the fact that various towns have taken the action to create certain voting requirements, specific voting requirements well, a in their bylaws. So we go to, um, what are those classes we take in Worcester at Holy Cross? Citizen Planner Training Collaborative. Okay, so they're a huge, you know, I assume they're nonprofit, but they, you know, are a free guidance to municipalities in Massachusetts, and they have a handbook. And if you go to their SPR, they actually have that same line is what they recommend to all towns and cities to use as their voting for site plan review. So it, 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 no, it's not about one case or multiple cases or how many, but over the last 25 years, this has evolved to be the standard line that municipalities use. And all I'm saying is that is even, you know, what, even if we went with what Mr. Bard says today, that is still far more conservative and restricting than what, you know, the average norm is for towns right now for voting with their SPR. That's all I'm saying. Anyone else have any comments? I, I'm, you know, we can postpone this to June 5th if, if people are up for that. We could do a little more research, a little more thought. Mm -hmm. I think that would be helpful for everybody. Pari? I just suggested that in the spirit that it will really genuinely help me also make up my mind yeah. hearing Excellent. all of the members. So I think it would be really helpful to Great. have a bit more time. And no, I think it's something that we should think about because I think it's important in some ways we could just, you know, default to the incorrect language of the zoning bylaw, but, you know, this is an opportunity we could send a message to the town council too, along with that we feel that it's a priority that we want them to work with us to help improve and um, clean up our zoning bylaw. Um, someone, do we have to make a, oh, Maria, go ahead. Just real quick, the zoning subcommittee had three amendments that we've been drafting sort of reports on, and this was one of the three. So we were pushing it as a priority, you know, the marijuana buffers, supplemental dwelling units, and this issue we thought might be nice ways to have them step into how mm -hmm. zoning amendments are made. So I don't know if we're still pushing this one um, equally with the other two, since we also have the attorney working on it simultaneously, but we were trying to push, you know, some of these into their um, sort of attention, their periphery, but um, I'm not sure if the sort of traction we're getting on this. Yeah. So. so that's correct that the zoning subcommittee was pushing that and they were saying that these are three amendments that they wanted to bring up early before town council. I had forgotten that. So mm -hmm. yes, this would be included in those. Great, so maybe that can be on the agenda for the zoning subcommittee also for yes. next week. Great. Do we have to make a motion to? Yes, this yeah, is okay. a public hearing, so someone needs to move to uh, continue it to June 5th. Laurie? I'm making the motion to continue the hearing of planning board rules and regulations to the next meeting, June 5th. Second, great. Great, any discussion? Uh, oh, do you, do you have a question? Oh, are you already vote? Vote. Okay, I just saw that. Um, so uh, raise your hand if you're in favor for that. Great, all in favor? Unanimous? Great. All right, so then we have uh, planning and zoning reports, zoning subcommittee report. <laughs> Nothing to report. <laughs> Um, uh, and old business. Um, so, Chris, do we have any old business? I don't think so. 
And do we have any new business? Um, the only new business really is to discuss um, when people are available this summer. And um, I got a little panicked today when I was realizing how many <laughs> members would be on vacation or um, whatever. So I think I'll send an email out tomorrow and you can all respond mm -hmm. to it and tell me when you're going to be here. There, there are currently six meetings scheduled for the summer. One of them is July 3rd, which is right before July 4th. So that's, you know, you can decide whether you want to have a meeting that night or not. Um, I'm sort of planning around that, but if it turns out that you do have a meeting, I'll, I'll put that together. Um, so. Chris, so what do you think of a doodle poll? And you could list all the upcoming dates through the yeah, summer. Yeah, I could try that. And yeah. then, right. I, 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 yeah. I'm sure Pam can help me with that. Yeah, it's, I, I would even be willing to come in and help you. But I think that would make it easier than everybody trying to like write down dates. And, yeah. um, great. So, so we're on to Form A, A and R, subdivision applications. We have two A and R's tonight. Um, one is something that you might be familiar with. It's on uh, Redgate Lane, and um, Jonathan Clayt has gone back and forth between whether he wants to um, have a flag lot next to him or not, and he's uh, currently decided not to have a flag lot next to him, and so he wants to combine the flag lot that he carved off earlier, perhaps a year or so ago, and combine it with his property. And I'm going to pass along a, um, a, a map that Ms. Field um, created for us, and you can see what the existing condition is. It shows two lots, one outlined in yellow, that is um, Mr. Clayt's house lot, and the other one is outlined in blue, that is an existing flag lot. And the idea is to combine these two lots. Yeah, no, it's this one. I know the people. I know for these. Yeah. Yes. Mm. Here's his house, and here's the flag lot. So he wants to combine the flag lot with his house lot. Mm -hmm. Okay, it's pretty simple. And when was the flag lot made? It wasn't the flag that long lot ago. Is this, um, no, when was it? Wasn't that oh, long ago? It was ago, made was it? in the last couple <coughs> of years. Yeah, okay. Um, at first, Sounds he wanted familiar. to not have it be developed. Then he carved it off as a flag lot, and it went through a special permit process with the Zoning Board of Appeals, mm. and then there were issues with that, so I think that in the end he decided he'd prefer to just keep it undeveloped for now. Okay. So, so do you uh, author as <laughs> the vice chair to sign this? Yes. Does he have to pay a fee every time he proposes <laughs> one of these changes? They do. Yeah. Good. <laughs> Yes, good. <laughs> yeah, really. <laughs> um, upcoming, oh, was there another one? Oh. So the second one is a little more complicated. It's property down on West Street that's currently owned by uh, Barry Roberts, and um, he has a riding arena down there. It's down near Camel Hassan's barn, um, which used to be a furniture store and is now a tack shop. Um, so we have three parcels outlined on this locust plan. Um, there's a yellow parcel that is a flag lot, and then there are two blue parcels. One um, has a house on it, and the other one has a house and a couple of barns on it. And, and he wants to reconfigure these. Um, strangely enough, the way the properties exist now, and I don't know how they got this way, but the way they exist now, two property lines go through a major riding arena. So that's not allowed. You can't have property lines going through a building. The building has to be set back from the property lines. So I'm going to pass this around, and you can see it. And then I'll bring around the, um, the proposal for the new uh, property lines.
Chris, what's the zoning on this? Uh, what is the zoning on this area? Do you know? The zoning on Barry Roberts' property is RO, residential outlying. Okay. Thank you. away, create a lot here with a house and a garage, and a lot here with a house and a little piece of land going back, and make the riding arena um, conform to the zone by huh. that exists now. Okay. I see. So this is an effort to bring this into conformance. I don't know. No kidding. <laughs> it's very strange. And that's not an old building, it's not relatively new building. So. Really? You know. Oh. Hmm. hmm. Weird. So, so do you want to your vice chair to yeah, sign? Yeah, this is. Okay. Yes. To Chris. Go ahead. So, Chris, what what might have happened that the building ended up across the property lines like that? I don't know. Um, <laughs> it, it's unusual that. because he would have had to get a building permit yeah. to yeah. put the building there. So, I don't know how someone didn't catch that when the building permit was um, issued. So, it's just one of those things that slipped through the cracks. But he's making amends now, mm -hmm. so that's a good nice. thing. Uh, upcoming ZBA applications? Sadler Field can address that. Field Sadler can address that. <laughs> So I think we've been through all of these before, but um, Cooley Dickinson Healthcare wants to put a driveway on uh, Northampton Road or Route 9, just east of the intersection with University Drive. So they went to the Zoning Board of Appeals and said that they thought it was a de minimis change. And the Zoning Board of Appeals said there are too many issues with regard to this. We'd like you to submit a special permit application. Mm -hmm. So they are going to do that. They're gonna submit a special permit application. Um, there's a project on Fearing Street where someone is converting a garage to living space. I think I've told you about that before. And that did go before the Zoning Board of Appeals last week, and I think it was approved. Um, the project on Bay Road, you signed an A&R plan to separate out a flag lot, and it was a very complicated flag lot. Um, it was a few weeks ago that you signed it. Mm -hmm. um, in the end, the applicant has decided to withdraw the application. Um, mm -hmm. They were submitting a special permit application for a flag lot to the zoning board, but it just got too complicated, so they decided to withdraw that. Um, and then reporting on some things that the zoning board did act on already, they approved Hickory Ridge, um, the Hickory Ridge Golf Course to have the solar arrays, and now the town is trying to um, get CPAC money to purchase a, a big portion of that property. Um, and then the Herbology Group, which is a group that wants to be able to sell um, medical and recreational marijuana in the uh, property that's currently occupied by rafters. They're going through their special permit process and they have to come back to the planning board with further information about their parking and um, how they're gonna fence off some areas. Upcoming SPP, SPR sub applications. 
So I'm expecting a dog park application to come in tomorrow, <clears throat> and that would be the town of Amherst applying to construct a dog park using money from the Stanton Foundation. Um, and the dog park is going to be built on Old Belchertown Road. Uh, it's on the old landfill site, and it's right next to the road. Um, and it's a, a small area that's going to be fenced, and I think it, I think it will be a nice um, addition to the town, but you'll have to decide that. When you say small, like is it a half acre? Or like, you know, I like don't, is it really I don't like have a, the description here. Like, do people walk me. their dogs? Oh, yes, yeah. people Jack's can walk up. their yeah. dogs, yes. So there's a, um, yeah. a, a large dog and a small dog portion to it. So okay. I think it's uh, an acre and a half okay. total. Oh. So yeah. the, the small dog, obviously, I think it's, it's somewhere between a quarter and a half acre. And the other, the, for the large dogs, is, is an acre. And there's a special gate system to where the dogs don't get tangled up. And because that's like the most, uh, uh, that's where problems occur during the <laughs> entryway. So, and the, the Berkshire Engineering uh, has done like a dozen of these designs and oh, take them stand in. They, uh, we've been working hand in hand with them. Hmm. Um, and so it's, there's a lot of proven uh, unknown concepts and, uh, and parking is, is an issue there because there, there's not, um, uh, it's there's no parking available on the road other than mm. just you know uh, would be parallel. So there, that's going to be a change. Um, but it has water, um, and it's on a landfill, so it's kind of restricted in terms of what they're going to do. But what they're going to do is bring in a lot of fill, and so the cover will, will not be impacted there. So that couldn't be compliant with the existing solid waste closure permit. That's that's uh, there. Excellent to know. Thank yeah. you. And that, that is pretty sizable. So the dogs have enough room to oh, yeah. run and do that. <clears throat> um, planning board committee and liaison reports. Uh, PVPC, Jack, anything? Yeah, we just have uh, that dinner meeting, which is described in the minutes, uh, Thursday, June 13th. I plan on going. Good. <laughs> uh, uh, Community Preservation Act Committee, Michael? Uh, no real report, but the, um, there seems to be some pushback on the issue of, on the uh, single, room uh, single room occupancy project from um, uh, Valley CDC on uh, Northampton Road. Uh, there was a large meeting last night, which I did not go to, but uh, apparently, according to the paper, there's uh, some, uh, some neighbor uh, re negative reaction to that. So that project is somewhat on hold in spite of the fact that uh, it was the most important project that CPAC uh, was uh, voted on and was strongly in favor of it. Um, so it remains to be seen what will happen there. Thank you. Oh yeah, Chris. So um, the town council recognizes that there is a amount of consternation that um, has erupted or arisen, I should say, that's a better word. <laughs> arisen, project. yes. And um, they're planning to host a meeting on the 18th, on June 18th. I think it's in the Bang Center. And I think it's at six o'clock. I can't, I will send you the information about that. But it's an effort to um, have Valley CDC and the um, neighbors Come, come together and um, talk about the project, talk about what the concerns are, and talk about the details of the project and, and see, um, you know, just a conversation about it and, and see if they can come together on some of these things. So you might want to attend. I'll send you a, a flyer about that. Hmm. Um, Agricultural Commission, Pari, are you still in limbo land? Mm -hmm. Yeah, oh, okay. Uh, design Review Board, Michael? Uh, we have not had a meeting since our last Planning Board meeting. Okay. Uh, and Greg's not here, so <laughs> I don't know if Chris, the Amherst Municipal Affordable Housing Trust, if you knew anything. I don't, I can't give a report on <clears throat> okay. our activities. Thanks. Uh, and, well, Zoning Subcommittee, Maria, there was... Meet next week. 
Nothing for UTAC and uh, Downtown Parking Working Group, the consultant Nelson Nygaard continues to work on a draft of their report. Uh, before I go to report of the chair, I just, we didn't do public uh, comment <coughs> earlier because we didn't have any public, but there is, I, it, nothing to, great, okay. Uh, report of chair, I have nothing to report. Report of staff. Um, I do not have anything to report, but I look forward to working with you all for the next year, and um, I'm so happy that you're here. Well, uh, adjournment, are we, yep, good, done.